Hey folks, this is Vince with Ads Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to quickly check out Blood Drive Solitaire. It's important to stress that what you're looking at here is a prototype, so everything that you're about to see is subject to change. With that being said, you can order a copy on the Game Crafter for roughly 13 bucks, but just be warned, like I said, what you'd be ordering is a prototype. The developer did mention to me that he wished to improve the game in various ways, uh, but this initial copy is sort of to raise awareness and to get basically his foot in the door and try and figure out what he can do with the game. And I'm all for it. I'm all for games that have an educational message behind them. In this case, it's all about donating blood. So the purpose of this video is just to quickly overview the product. I will have a written preview. I'll put a link to that in the below description as well. Okay, so what is Blood Drive Solitaire all about? Well, first of all, it supports one player, as the name implies, and it takes roughly 10 or 20 minutes to play. You don't have to play solo if you don't want to. You could play cooperative with a family member, a friend, whatever, just to try to get through as many of these need cards as possible. So what are you trying to do? Well, like I said, you're trying to get through as many need cards as possible. You're going to be using these donor cards here and match them up with these need cards. If a need card has three donor cards attached to it, the need card is completed and you're going to deal a new one from the deck to uh, bring the need card count back up to three. All right, let's go ahead and give this a try. What we're going to do is we're going to deal three cards from this donor card deck here. And the way you draw them, according to the instructions, is very important because you're not supposed to see the other two cards that are behind the card that you're going to initially look at. So I have three cards in my hand. I'm going to flip them over. Can't see the ones behind. It's an AB negative. So uh, this is where the lines come into play. Um, for those of you that, you know, don't want to bother looking, okay, AB negative, does it match with any of these over here? Then you can just simply look at the lines and try and match them up that way. In this case, this AB negative pink line matches up with this one here. So I'm going to play this one like that. So that is one match so far on that AB negative card. Now I've got this O positive. As you can see, it's compatible with O positive, A positive, B positive, and AB positive. Um, will it match anything I have on the table? It matches that A positive down there, so I may want to go ahead and do that. Line up with that green. And then I've got this A negative. Does that A negative match with anything? Um, yeah, it does. Okay, so I could do something like this if I wanted to. I could put this one on top of this. And now I've got two cards that fulfill the need of that need card in the middle, but I need one more in order to get rid of it completely. So I'm going to draw three more from this deck and just keep repeating that process. Something like that. Okay, so I've got a uh, B positive here. Is this B positive going to fit anywhere? It doesn't look like it. Now, in the case, uh, you know, in this case, what you're going to do is you're going to have to discard all the cards that are in your hand and then draw three more. So it's just kind of bad luck that way. So we're going to do one, two, three. Same process. Okay, that one fits somewhere. Uh, the question is, where am I going to put it? I could either match it up with this uh, black B negative here, or I can complete that one in the middle. I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Okay, and we'll get to these in a minute. But once this happens, uh, you can go ahead, discard these cards, and you're going to move this need card over into the score pile. And you'll count these need cards in the, uh, in the score pile at the end of the game to see how many points you get. We're going to go ahead and draw a new one. And you're just going to keep repeating that process. Taking a look at our cards again. Um, okay, the A positive matches. We'll go ahead and put that there. I really need a felt table. Lastly, uh, a po or AB positive doesn't match with anything. So I'm going to have to discard this, draw three more, and just keep trying to complete as many of these need cards as I can until the deck runs out. When the deck runs out and I'm out of cards, then I count the number of cards in the score pile, the need cards in the score pile, and that's my score. Um, there's actually a typo in the rule book and on the box. Uh, at the end of the game, it says, um, there are no more cards in a donor card deck. Your score is the number of completed donor cards. Now that is incorrect, at least in my opinion. Um, I didn't check with the developer ahead of time, but I'm pretty sure that you want to count the number of need cards that you have in your score pile because uh, the cards that go, the blood, the uh, donor cards that go into a discard pile could come from your hand or they could come from completed need cards. So you're mixing and matching with those. So this is not a good way to count 
what your score would be. So it would be how many need cards you've actually completed. So this is what I, what I said. This is a prototype. I'm sure that's something the developer may address sometime down the line. But all in all, I don't review... Uh, I don't really like to review prototypes because, again, they're not representative of the final product. But I will say that this is a really cool idea and it conveys a positive message. I like games that are educational or semi-educational. I like the fact that these cards have little text on them, like this AB positive has a suitable donor only for AB positive. So these could work as flashcards. And then you've got these facts that are listed on these need cards. 1.5% of the population have this blood type and 8.1% of donors are a suitable match. So I like, I like little tidbits like that that are sort of snuck into games because, you know, folks can, or kids can uh, learn and have fun at the same time. So I do think that this prototype is headed in the right direction, and I'm looking forward to seeing what this developer is going to do with it at uh, some point in the future. If you guys haven't already, subscribe to me on Twitch and YouTube. That way you can stay up to date with any new content I happen to publish. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.